How's it going guys? It's me, the Dumb Fanatic, and welcome to my draft analysis. Yes, another draft analysis for the inaugural season of the Baby League, commissioned by the one and only El Sizzle, obviously the coach of Borussia Dumbfan in the GBA. Um, great friend of mine who I've known in the community for years now. Um, but luckily he's given me the opportunity to join a rather experimental league which is set up. Um, now, you might be wondering why it's called the Baby League. There are a, quite a few key rules um, which have forced the coaches to draft the teams they have. So, before we go over my draft, although you can quite clearly see that I have an APOM already over there, um, the rules are the Pokemon must have a base stat total of less than 400. It can only be a first base evolution, so Pokemon that don't evolve also are not allowed. Um, and the item Eviolite is banned, and I moves like, I want to say moves, no, and sorry, Pokemon specific items are banned, so for example, Deep Sea, Deep sea, deep sea Scale, Light Ball, stuff like that. Eviolite's banned, um, otherwise I think it's good going. I want to say moves like Nightshade and Seismic Toss are banned, because Pokemon in their baby form just have over 100 HP, so they'd be like a guaranteed free hit KO on every Mon, so that would kind of be a bit stupid, especially with, you know, hazards and stuff. So, um, yeah, I think they're the, sort of the ground rules, otherwise it's a free draft, draft what you want from any tier you want. Um, when I say tier, basically what happened was we split all the Pokemon that had a base, total of, a base stat total of less than 400 and split them into 50s. Um, I think most things landed in like the 250 to 3, no, the 300 to 350, no, I don't remember. It was, but most mons fit between the 300 and 400 mark. Um, the rest are niche, I would say, or just bad mons, mostly which were picked for a certain role or not picked at all. Um, but the great thing is about this league, um, no one has a clue what they're doing. Like, other than team building with what you've got, no one has an idea what's good. No one has any idea what's bad. Um, no one knows what the meta's like. Obviously, in most draft league format, I would say that it's quite a bulky meta because a lot of things are quite fat. But the low evolutions don't tend to have that fatness. Um, and there are like a few mon, like mons, in this sort of bracket that can still hit incredibly hard. Um, and I think I've been lucky enough to get quite a few of them. Um, but I would say everyone's teams is, uh, on paper, looks really good. We've got some interesting weather teams. Um, I've actually got a couple of weather users myself, not because they're weather teams, just because just I have. Um, we've got a weather team, as far as I remember. Um, teams, uh, Lars has got an infamous fire, water, grass, um, starter Pokemon core. Um, just loads of interesting things and mons which wouldn't get much of the limelight like normally in normal draft league format. Um, and there's probably a lot of things which are going to be good which you'd expect to be good um, because you know I think basically what most guys here have been basing this off is Little Cup. Um, whether that's the right thing to do or not we have no idea but we'll soon find out. Anyway I think I've gone over like the basis of the league as it is. Um, sorry my phone's going off if, I'm, if you see me just staring down there. Um, let's just go over the things we've got because honestly I'm not going to keep this too long because one, I've picked what I want because I think it'll work, but I actually have no idea if it will work or not. And two, like I said, none of us actually know what we're doing in this sort of meta. Um, we could be defining it, we might find out what's good, we might find out what's bad. Hopefully what I have got is, is all good stuff. So, as you can see on the screen here, um, the first Pokemon we have in our team is Apom. Now, I actually got first pick of the draft overall. Um, so I do get wheel picks, but I did get first pick overall. now. Usually, um, in a normal draft format, that's excellent. You know, you take your Hooper Unbounds, you take your Mega Mobiles, you take your Lando Tees, you take your Tapu Kokas, you take your Zygarde 10%, uh, sorry, 50%. However, we have no idea what we're doing here, but apparently I did get a snipe with this. I decided to go for Apom round one. Apom was one of those mons which was near the top of the 350 to 400 base tier total bracket. Um, what I did mention about Z-Move users was we're allowed to pick two Z-Move users, anything could be a Z-Move user. Um, so with that in mind, I felt like picking Apom and making it a Z-Move user turn one was pretty good. Main draw is, it does now get Skill Link, it does now get Tail Slap. Um, like, there are very few things in this format which take Life Orb Tail Slaps. Even Max Defense Bulky Mons. Um, and even then, 
Apon's so good because it's a normal type. And because it's a normal type, it does get ridiculously good coverage. Gunk Shot, Seed Bomb, uh, Low Kick, U-Turn, Knock Off, Fake Out, like I said, Tail Slap. If I don't want to run that, because I think the best way of countering it this season, I think what everyone will bring against me is Rocky Helmet, because Apon can just fit in any team, really. Like, you know what it's going to do, but you don't know what moveset it's going to have. Um, and I figured that's probably why... You know, it's, it's going to be quite good. 70 attack in this format is quite high. Um, and 85 speed is like, pff, I don't know, like the fifth highest speed tier in this format. There, I don't think there's anything that hits 100. Um, there's, I think Elekid is the fastest at 95. Um, there's some things like Magby, which is 83. Um, I have got some speedy things on my team. We'll go over those later on. But there aren't many things that outspeed base 85. So if I wanted to run Scarfed, um, just to know I outspeed everything on my opponent's team. That's pretty good going. But yeah, like 55, 55, 55 bulk also appears to be decent in this format. Um, so I just think overall Apom is just a cool mom. Um, it could prove to be a real nuisance with Tail Slap. Um, even with just stuff like Silk Scarf or Life Orb, you know. But I, like I said, I'm a Z-move user, so if I did want to just punch a hole in someone's team with some coverage moves, there is that option too. So, next up, uh, round two. I have tried to synergize this team uh, as much as possible, uh, but I figured that by the time this mon got back to me, I should probably pick it, and I've lost my OBS. There we go. Um, I've gone for Timber, basically because I feel like Timber's raw power um, and Mac Punch will be pretty good this season. There are a lot of rock and normal types in this meta. Um, so I figured that Mac Punch might be quite nice to have. For a fighting type, it also gets very decent coverage. It gets bulk up, it gets drain punch, so it's kind of reliable recovery. Um, it does get the, obviously, elemental punches. It gets poison jab for fairies. Um, I think this mon's really cool. Like, it's not as fat as Conkledare, which is a shame. I think sort of going into the pick and then realizing afterwards, it, I thought it was fatter. Um, but 80 attack is incredibly high um, in this meta. Um, 55 defense for 75 HP, again, is actually really fat. And especially defense at 35 isn't great, but, you know, I can still use AV on this thing. And this Pokemon works with AV because of Drain Punch. Um, but again, the, the abilities on this thing, I, I forgot to mention, Apom literally has useless abilities outside of Skill Link. Um, Timber does actually have three very usable abilities, and I think they're all equally as viable sort of each week so it makes prepping for my opponent really hard so it does get guts which means scored isn't an issue it does get iron fist which means all its punching moves get a boost and it does get sheer force which means not all of its punching moves get a boost but uh, a lot of moves such as poison jab which wouldn't get iron fist boost do you get boosted um obviously it gets rock slide as well which gets boosted by sheer force but you know i can go for stone edge i believe it gets earthquake too it just gets all the physical moves you wanted to have basically um that's pretty much all I can say for Timber, to be honest. I just wanted some physical presence to go with Apom. Apom is going to be weak to any fighting types. And there are some good fighting types about. There's Makuhita, there's um, Mienfu, there's Machop, there's Meditite. All these things Apom might struggle against, um, which Timber um, might be able to help kill. We'll, we'll, we'll soon see. Um, but I have got things which help with fighting types later on. So, um, next up, we're going to go with Shelmet. Shelmet is a staple. It might be seen as a meme pick in a lot of sort of actual, you know, normal leagues. But Shelmet with a Neviolite is one fat bastard. I'll tell you that for free. Um, I'm pretty sure Ellie came up with the whole idea of using Shelmet um, years and years ago. But actually, even without a Neviolite, which is banned um, this season, 50, 85, 65 defences is really good. Um, this thing does get reliable recovery in um, Recover. It gets access to spikes and toxic spikes, um, and it gets access to, uh, to like, it, it's attacking move fall isn't great, but it gets uh, access to enough. Um, it gets final gambit, which is interesting. Um, acid armor, it gets baton pass, so I can baton pass some boosts if I really wanted to. Um, in, in, uh, infestation is a cool move, it does indeed get, but it gets things like kicker drain, bug buzz, um, I really don't know what else it gets off the top of my head. But again, it's got some cool abilities. Hydration, so if there's a rain team at all, I can bring that. One really cool move it gets is actually, uh, sorry, not move, ability it has is shell armor. So if I am an acid armor set, you can't crit me from my physical side. This thing can just sit there and stall teams, potentially. I think the main draw, though, was the fact it's one of very few mons which gets spikes and toxic spikes, let alone just spikes or toxic spikes in the format, and I figured they might be quite useful. Um, I feel like this is going to be quite an offensive meta um because i don't think the bolt quite matches the offense so having spikes will really help sort of speed uh will help with like my priority because i have a fair bit of priority on this team um 
and just sort of general power. So, you know, I think spikes and toxic spikes, if there are some bulky things, can help in general as well. Um, Shelmet's here just kind of to be fat, really. Bug typing on its own, defensively, is, is okay. Um, like, a, uh, like ground types, there aren't too many. Fighting types, there are a few. It takes on both of those quite well. But fire, um, there aren't too many fire types, actually, either. Flying types are quite common. Um, so there are things that might want to partner this, uh, which I get later on. But yeah, I just think Shelma is, you know, a nice start of some kind of defensive core. Um, next up, I do actually decide to pick up Tentacle. Now, I didn't originally plan to get Tentacle in my team. I think originally here I was going to get Snivy, because I wanted Defog. Um, but looking at the meta, there's really very few Defog users and Rapid Spin users. All Defog users are flying types, and obviously that doesn't help with... Uh, stealth rocks, which I think is going to be the best hazard in the in the um, baby league, out of your sticky webs, your spikes, toxic spikes, and stealth rocks. Um, so rapid spin was quite crucial for me, I think, uh, at, at this point. It gives me more toxic spikes, but really I don't want that. And I actually think Tentacle might have the highest special defense out of all the Pokemon in this in this meta. Um, sure, its HP and defense aren't great, but it actually has really good speed, so it does make it kind of a really cool utility mon. Um, like, I can run max defense on this thing, I don't have to run special bulk on it, because it hits, I think, 120 without any investment, without having a beneficial nature, which is ridiculously high in this meta. Um, so I can just kind of run it physically defensively, uh, max HP, and it's just kind of a nice overall wall. Obviously it's got Scald, it's got Sludge Wave, um, there's lots of grass, and there's actually a few fairy types in this meta, so uh, nice typing to have. Um, it does get some really cool moves like Giga Drain, Knock Off, Icy Wind I believe. Um, it gets Swords Dance, and I don't know why I'd want to use that. The speed means it can be offensive, 50 special attack isn't anything to laugh at. And it does get Hydro Pump, it does get Sludge Wave. They're going to hit hard off Stab with something like a Life Orb. Um, again, it, it's kind of drafted here as like a specially bulky mon, but like I said it can be a utility mon or an offensive mon. So I just think it's a nice sort of flexible mon to have in my team. Uh, next up we have got Hippopotas. Now <laughs> the real reason I took this is because Lars uh, took Drulba round three and I was like no, just just no, I'm not I'm not letting you have sand. Um, I, th I think there's one other sand stream user? Is there? I can't remember if there is. Um, but I didn't want him having sand. But it's actually quite a nice um, sort of bulky mon. Um, on paper as you can see in front, you know, 68 HP quite high for this meta I've, I've realized 78 defense incredible 42 special defense not the best but if you invest in it you can make it work um it's a stealth rocker so i now have all my hazards other than sticky webs spoilers i don't get sticky webs because there's very few mons that get it in this meta um it's a, just a mon that has stab earthquake off base 72 attack which not many things can really take too well um you know, flying types can switch in, but it does get access to rock type moves. Sadly, it doesn't get the fangs. Uh, that's only hip out on that gets those, but it does get like, curse, which I didn't realise. Uh, it gets raw and whirlwind, so it's a good phaser. It gets reliable, excuse me, reliable recovery in slack off. So again, I did kind of draft this to fit well with Shelmet and Tentacle. They quite, form quite a nice core, to be honest. There are a few typings that it don't appreciate but i'll make things work it's all good um but yeah it's kind of here as a bulky mon um my team actually turns out to be quite fast so having some slow things um in hippopotas um shelnut and timber is actually quite good it kind of helps deter any trick room users which there are a few trick room potential mons in, in this meta as well um, but yeah that's kind of hippopotas you know what you know what hippowdon does that hippopotas does it just nowhere near as well but in this meta i'm hoping it can do something uh next up i i'm very surprised it got to round six but i only realized how good it was on paper um when when it came to my pick and i picked ghastly now Ghastly, yes, it's a glass cannon, but I have a lot of bulk on my team as it is, so I'm happy to pick up a glass cannon. Now, this thing has 100 special attack and 80 speed. 80 speed is incredibly fast, let alone 100 special attack being absolutely grim. Um, I think Stab Shadow Ball alone, other than Dark Types, and what else was this ghost? I think that's it. Just two shots, like the whole meta. That's without like a boosting item, so if I am Life Orb or Specs, and there's a very good chance I can run Specs because I outspeed a lot of things, 
Shadow Ball just does enormous amounts of damage. Now, you get Sludge Wave as well, which it got through, I think, Dream World in Gen 5. Again, very powerful poison move. Um, it gets great coverage. It gets Energy Ball, Giga Drain, Icy Wind, Dazzling Gleam. Sadly, not Focus Blast, but the Hidden Power Fighting is enough. Um, Sucker Punch if I really want to. Um, I'm just looking through the moves here. Uh, what else have we got? Psychic, which is actually quite nice. Uh, looking at one of my teams I built this week. Will-O-Wisp is really nice to have. Trick, again, ta it's a fast taunt user. Um, it's a, It can be used toxic and poison type toxic can't miss. Um, foul play could be an interesting move to use on it. Clear smog, great sort of phasing, not phasing, stat removal move. Just the list goes on. But obviously this thing is definitely here to be a special powerhouse and if anyone can find something which takes hits from this thing incredibly well, Give me the answers because I haven't been able to find anything, to be honest with you. Um, levitate is a good, like, obviously Ghastly keeps levitating, that's great. It works quite well with uh, Tentacool um, being weak to ground. Um, so there is that, obviously they're both weak to Psychic, so it's something I have to look out for. But uh, as far as I'm aware, there isn't a ground Psychic type. Um, but yeah, Ghastly is quite self-explanatory. Don't think I need to talk about it too much longer. It, ghastly is Ghastly. I think I wanted Abra originally, but Ghastly is something that definitely works. Uh, for me. So, um, that's the first six done. Next up, we have got, I know you've just seen them all there, we've got Magnemite. Um, seal types aren't very common, um, but I think a lot of them have been drafted. No, Bronzor, Aaron have been drafted. Uh, what other steel types are there? I'm struggling. Definitely struggling to name you some steel types here. Um, yeah, but Magnemite is a cool steel type. It's also an electric user. Now, Magnet Pool is here to keep those pesky uh, steel types in check, if there may be any. Sturdy is a cool ability, obviously it lets me basically have a built-in focus sash. Um, I think there's a lot of setup in this tier, so having sort of like a... As long as there's no hazards, having Magnemite here with a Sturdy could be quite nice. And then I think the main thing, which I might use most this season, is Analytic. Um, Magnemite's got 45 speed, so it's not horrendously slow in this meta, but it's not fast. Um, but it can go specs, it can go scarfed, it can also go uh, very slow um, with analytic. Choice specs analytic, again, there's not many switch ins. Ground types do check this thing quite well, but as you can probably see from the actual mons on the screen right now, I do have things that deal with ground types quite well. Um, and I do have coverage on other things, uh, and I also have uh, tentacle, which obviously gets schooled. Uh, it can deal with ground types reasonably well, so I'm not too worried. Um, Fire typing as well, I, I kind of fix up later on too, which are my weakness I mean. Um, Volt Switch, Flash Cannon, like I said there's a few fairies, I'm pretty sure with Magnemite and Ghastly, fairies will not be coming against me. If they do, then I question it. Um, but yeah, I mean it's kind of here for the power, and uh, Electric could be quite nice because there's lots of flying and water types in this meta. I'm pretty sure every team has a water type at least. Um, but yeah, Flash Cannon hits those rocks, there's quite a few rock types going. And steel isn't a type which is resisted that much in this. There's not many um, steel types going. Um, and the few that there are going, I will beat because I have magnet pulls, so they can't switch or anything like that. So I, I figured like Magnemite's quite cool. A lot of electric types did go. I was I was never going to get a Lekid, but a Lekid would have been my choice at this point. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got Magnemite. It gives me some nice power on the special side. I'm pretty much sorted on the special side at this point. Um, next up, we're going to go with Krabby. Now, Krabby wouldn't have been my option. I would have probably gone with Froakie if it didn't get liquidation this uh, this generation or since Ultra Sun Ultra Moon. Sheer Force, Life Orb, sorry, that's Shell Armor. Um, liquidation of 105 physical attack. I said, show me switch ins for Ghastly. Show me switch ins for Krabby. Um, grass types? Nah, I have X Scissor. Um, that, that'll deal quite hard. Even then, I don't think a grass type is going to appreciate a Crab Hammer. Um, it gets Swords Dance. Its move pool to benefit Sheer Force isn't that great, but it's good enough. Um, literally, it gets. Um, liquidation, it gets Rock Slide. I think that's it. Special side, it gets more, but utility wise, it does get Knock Off, it gets uh, X Scissor, it gets Super Power. Um, I think they're the main, it gets Double Edge, Brick Break, uh, Crab Hammer, if I do fancy going for crits. Um, but there is no reason for me not to run Liquidation because it's stronger with Sheer Force. Setup, it gets Agility um, and Swords Dance. 
It's got base 50 speed, which isn't too bad in this meta from sort of looking over building teams so far. Agility is definitely something my opponents need to look out for. If I just want to go for a pure, straight up offense sword stance, nah, I don't know if there is to switch into a plus two liquidation, sheer force life orb. Other than a grass type, even then I guarantee that I'll take at least half, and then there's Exeter to clean up. Um, so, Krabby is a powerhouse. It might not be bought too often because its special defense is pitiful, its HP is pitiful, its physical defense is awesome. I actually might be highest out of my whole team. Um, but it's not designed to be bulky at all. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of here as a physical powerhouse. I'm hoping I can have some fun with Sheer Force um, and Liquidation. Next up, we've got Litlio, the penultimate mom. Literally, I was forced to pick Litlio because I needed the fire type. Um, but actually, looking back at picking Litlio, it fits my team really well. Um, and its stats are actually pretty good. I feel Normal Stab is going to be quite solid. Um, and one of the few things that deals with um, normal uh, stab is obviously ghost and steel, both of which fire can deal with relatively well. The only thing Litio can't deal with too well is rock types, but I do have Magnemite, I have Krabby, I have Tentacle, I have um, Coverage, and I have Timber to deal with those rock types. So Litio can actually do some good damage. Um, it's pretty well rounded. Its worst stat is attack, but actually it does get Moxie and it does get Flare Blitz now. It does get work up, so potentially physical Litlio is a thing that could happen. But there isn't much that can really deal with Hyper Voice and Fire Blast spam, if I'm honest with you. Um, 73 special attack, 72 speed is really quick as well uh, in this meta, I might add. And 62 HP, 58 defense, 54 speed F. It's actually really fat. Um, it's a shame this thing doesn't get anything like Morning Sun. I, I say that I don't actually think it does get Morning Sun. No, I mean I could run Rest if I wanted to, but again, fast Taunt user. Move Ball isn't the best, um, but it does get Dark coverage on both sides to go with its um, normal and Fire type coverage. Um, obviously, I could, it gets Wild Charge on the physical side, so it could potentially help with some Water types. But again, Hyper Voice Spam is probably good enough. Um, Noble Roar is a cool move. It does lower attack and special attack of opponent's Mon. Um, so that could be quite spammable, depending on any Defiant users. Solar Beam, if I fancy bringing Power Herb Solar Beam, it's not a Z user. Ghastly is a Z user, I forgot to mention that. Um, so it's something it can get, I'm just looking at his stupid moves now. Yawn, something else, cause phasing. I think Lilio could be quite like a, a little dark, I say dark horse, a little dark lion in, uh, in this format. But we'll soon find out, I guess. Finally, we have gone for Armora. So... Um, I needed a second Stealth Rocker, I've got it. Yes, I know I only have one Rapid Spinner in this format, but Stealth Rocks and other hazards don't seem that common in the format, based on drafts we have so far. Um, Amora's an interesting one. Um, a few dragons actually got drafted, and I was actually going to get uh, Dino, or Dino, sorry, because it's Ein, Dino, at this point, because there's not many switch-ins to Choice Band Outrage from that thing. But then, um, that got taken, I looked over and I was like, actually, you know what? Amora looks pretty good. Again, it's a mon which is deceitfully bulky. Yes, its typing isn't best for bulk, but neutral hits, especially on the special side, aren't going to be doing too much. It's a mon which could be great for Assault Vest. It gets set up in Rock Polish. It gets two fantastic abilities. Refrigerate lets me spam Hyper Voice. Hyper Voice doesn't get stopped by anything other than Soundproof ones, and I don't think any of those were drafted. Um, and if I don't want to run that and I want, you know, to come across a team with weather, it's no warning. Obviously I have Sandstorm potentially on Hippopotas as well. But spamming Blizzard in this meta doesn't seem too bad. Um, obviously the things that resist ice, so water and steel, and fire, all get hit by Thunderbolt and Earth Power, which this thing gets. Its move pool is relatively good. The only downside is it doesn't have a good special rock move. I lie, it gets Ancient Power. I didn't realise this. Um, could go for this on the boosts. Could be interesting. But again, looking at its move pool, it, it can go physical. It's got 59 attack. That's not horrendous. Especially with like return, refrigerate return. Does some good stuff. Um, it does get, you know, Aqua Tail, Blizzard, Car it gets Calm Mind, uh, Dark Pulse, Discharge, Dragon Tail, Earth Power, Encore, Flash Cannon, um, Iron Head. I I'm going over Ice Beam. Outrage, the very important Outrage. Rock Polish, Rock Slide, Stone Edge, Stealth Rocks, 
uh, Thunderbolt, Thunder Wave, Toxic Descent, Headbutt. Its move pool is fantastic. Um, Frost Breath is an in Breast? <laughs> Frost Breath is an interesting move because you know crits are useful. Um, Iron Defense is something it gets. Didn't realize that. Magnet Rise is kind of cool. Stops those uh, ground types hitting. Is super effective. Uh, Water Pulse. <laughs> You know, it just gets lots of cool moves, um, and I feel like Ice and Rock are quite spammable types in, in this meta now. I know I've said meta a lot in this game, so uh, in this game, I might, like, it's quarter past midnight, I've got, a, I keep looking at the clock because I know I have a game to play in a different league soon. Um, but that was kind of like a quick brief overview of my team. Um, sorry if it wasn't totally in depth because I don't really know what to expect from it, um, but hey, it's going to be an adventure. It, hopefully it's really good. Hopefully um, we get to the playoffs. There is only eight teams and I think there's four teams that get to the playoffs. So as long as we have a decent season, we should get there. As long as we're not the whipping boys of the league. And with this team, I don't think we should be the whipping boys at all. Um, we should be good to hopefully get quite far in this, uh, this format. But everyone's on an even playing field because no one has a clue what they're doing in this meta. So yeah, um, thanks for watching this video, guys. Make sure you do subscribe for more of this. I will leave links to the channels of all the other coaches and Twitters as well, if I remember. Um, for all the other coaches below. Otherwise, I don't have anything else to say, so I will see you guys uh, for week one relatively soon. Bye!